Jeannie McCafferty from New York. Today they try for $1,000 and the right to keep earning a salary of $500 a day on Who Do You Trust? This portion of Who Do You Trust is brought to you by Beach Not Lifesaver. Right now, here's the star of our show, Johnny Carson. Thank you very much. All right, come on. Hey, it's the fall season in New York. The audiences are wild. Thank you for coming today. And uh, Ed, who's first to uh, yes, lead off? We're all set. We have Lola Mason from right here in Manhattan yeah. and Louis Baudet from the Bronx. Well, hi, Lola. Things are picking up around here on the show. Lola, welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank Louis, you. do you mind if we talk to Lola first? No, not at all, Jenny. Uh -huh. Are you, you, you married, Lola? No, I'm not. I hope to be someday. In the meantime, I'm just working until I can get married and have lots and lots of babies. Is that right? You get married and have lots of babies? Yeah. Well, that, that's a good project. Do you have, are you engaged? Do you have a boyfriend or anything? Well, I have a fellow in mind, Johnny, but he doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> he doesn't know about what? That you want to get married or about the lots of babies? Both. Both? Huh? Lola, what do you do for a living? You said you were? I'm an actress, Johnny, but in between acting parts, I do a lot of modeling. I bet you're pretty good at it, too, huh? Thank you. What kind of jobs have you had? What type of modeling do you oh, do? Oh, just about everything in the modeling field. Some of them are pretty goofy. Goofy modeling jobs? Goofy. Such as? Well, the kind of thing where you miss everything, you know, queen of something. Oh, miss, you mean the miss so-and-so miss and, so and the miss so-and-so? Yeah. You've been in a lot of those, huh? Mm-hmm. I know a girl back, uh, back in the Midwest, she was Miss, uh, miss Merchant Marine. <laughs> oh, really? And then her cargo shifted or something, and uh, she was out of the contest. <laughs> what, uh, what, now, what, what are some of the miss, uh, miss somethings you've been? Well, I was Miss Rough Rider for ABC. That was uh -huh. plugging the new Rough Rider series. Uh -huh. I was Miss Pitted Prune. I won that title last year. <laughs> What was that? You were, you were Miss... Miss Pitted Prune. How many girls were uh, pitted against you in this thing? Oh, what a title. I've never heard of it like this. That's what are some of the other titles you were? Uh, I was Miss Popcorn, Miss Fig Newton, Miss Rabbit Meat, and Miss Razor Blades, the sharpest girl Miss in Rabbit town. Miss Rabbit Meat? And what was the last one? Miss Razor Blades, the sharpest girl in town. Lola, what did you have to do to win all these titles, anyway? Well, it depends on what I'm representing, Johnny. I remember once when I was Miss Aluminum, I had to wear an aluminum bathing suit. An aluminum bathing suit? What did you, what did you have? Uh, two saucepans and a roaster or something? <laughs> what? I've never heard of such a thing in my life. Did you enjoy your work, though? Yes, I had a wonderful time. Well, good, and best of luck as an actor, too. Thank you. Louis, we're going to talk to you in just a moment, but uh, we're going to take a break right now, okay? Right now, Beach Nut Lifesavers takes you to the world of good things to eat. What, what type of work do you do, Louis? I'm a chiropractor, Johnny. A chiro How long have you been a chiropractor? Oh, I had a bad back for a period of seven years. Uh -huh. I became interested in chiropractic, went to one. Then I took up the study of chiropractic. Uh -huh, I see. Now, chiropractic, if I'm right, that's uh, where you manipulate uh, the spine, isn't it? That's right, and you uh, find that you manipulate very successfully in many ailments. Oh, I see. Are you married, Louis? I am. Mm -hmm. I'm married for nine years. How did you meet uh, your, your wife? Oh, she was a friend of the family visiting my mother, and then I happened to come along. I took her home on the way home. Yeah. I started selling chiropractics. <laughs> Naturally, I had something to sell, so she had something to buy. She yeah. seemed interested. Yeah. And she started flirting about it, or about me, something. She really started flirting? Do you think it's because that you were a chiropractor that she started flirting? So I told. She had a dropped stomach, Johnny. So <laughs> <laughs> She dropped her stomach? No, it was her stomach, not mine. No, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, what, what did you... <laughs> Instead of a handkerchief, she drops her stomach. That's a great way to flirt, but what, what, do you, okay, what did you do? You uh, misunderstand, sir. I uh, probably did. What? It's just uh, an uh, ailment commonly known uh, in common parlance. Yeah. And... Uh, technically known as uh, stasis. Stasis, huh? Right. What did you do uh, for her drop stomach? Well, I went to her apartment and... Uh, <laughs> yeah? Well, believe it or not, I did uh, gave her an adjustment of the spine mm -hmm. for the uh, stomach. Six months later, we became married. Six months later, you were married. I would hope so. Successful yeah. adjustment. Well, tell me this. Now, this must keep you pretty busy. Do you have any time for hobbies or anything? No, Jenny, I don't. 
between my uh, chiropractic work and my other job, I'm quite busy. You have another job besides? Yes, sir. What is the other job? Just a butcher. <laughs> a butcher. A butcher? <laughs> now, during the day, you're a butcher, is, is that right? That's right. Nine to six, I am a butcher. The rest of the time is mine, and I do as I please, mostly chiropractic then. Now, you're a real butcher in a, in a meat That's store, right? That's right. I'm working for Hershey's Market, 183rd and St. Nicholas Avenue, yeah. Washington Heights. How do you combine uh, being a butcher and a chiropractor? Well, any time I have not, no meats to cut, I manipulate spines, yeah. <laughs> well, do you treat patients in their home or what? Yes, I call out to their homes. Uh -huh. right. Don't they lose a little confidence when they look outside and see you driving up in a meat truck? <laughs> well, I never use a meat truck, Johnny. Uh-huh. You like being a butcher? No, I hate it. I hated it from the first day I was in it. You hated it from the first day? That's right. How long have you been a butcher? Thirty years. Thirty years? <laughs> How long have you been a chiropractor? Seventeen odd years, Johnny. There certainly have been, haven't they? Seventeen <laughs> odd years. Tell me this, do you plan to continue in both jobs? Well, until the uh, chiropractic su can support me, I will continue in it. Hey, great. Do you remember uh, when you tr treated your first patient? Yes, Johnny, I do. Uh -huh. A friend of mine. And yeah. Well, I was studying chiropractic. He knew it, so he came up to me one day. Yeah. Do you have anything, do you know anything good for liver? So. What'd you say, onions? <laughs> Those great liver. Things. No, oh. yeah, just liver. Did you treat him? Uh, yes, uh -huh. uh, after I asked him to sign a release, that <laughs> well, he knows that I'm a, a student, student huh? yeah. so he shouldn't hold me for it. And you did, uh, you did work on him, huh? I How is he? Is he still around? Well, uh, I treated him in the Bronx uh, 17 odd years ago, and uh, he's He's still there. He hasn't moved since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that no, yeah, I know what you mean. He's still... It's like this, Why standing in the Bronx. Huh? Right. He goes to business uh, every day, Jack. Does he being in the butcher shop help uh, with your chiropractic, do you feel? It like? certainly does. In, in what way? Not only me, but the world, too. No, what I mean is, does your other job, butcher, uh, help you? Yes, as uh, a my butcher. He helps uh, me as well as the world, I say for the simple reason that I have discovered the morphological cause of non-pathologic high blood pressure and other diseases. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, that sounds very impressive. Sounds like you enjoy both of your jobs, huh? I do, to a great extent, sir. Do you actually, do you ever practice down at the butchery shop? Uh, yeah, butcher? sometimes I take a spring lamb and adjust it for a new technique. <laughs> <laughs> you take a, a lamb and... Yeah, lay it down on the block, just as I would a patient on a... Uh, <laughs> an adjusting table, and I uh, manipulate them. Did you ever... Spinal column of the lamb. Did you ever adjust a patient and then wrap him up in brown paper by mistake? i never done that uh -huh. yet. Not yet. Uh, Louis, it's nice to have you with us. It sounds like you enjoy your work. Lola, thanks for stopping by. And in just a moment, one minute, we'll play Who Do You Trust? <laughs> Louis will let you make the decisions whether you want to trust yourself or trust Lola on first names of famous people. First names of famous people. Want to answer it yourself, or? I think Laura would know more of them. All righty. What was the first name of Caruso? The Enrico. Great Enrico Caruso. <laughs> Shut, huh? I'm scared. Uh, how about music? Songs through the years. Uh, Lola again? Lola again. A favorite for almost half a century. Listen. Alexander's uh, right hand band. Tough, isn't it? Come on. <laughs> I don't know why we bothered to ask. Why don't we just give him the money? <laughs> yes, why don't you? In, all right, who do you trust on uh, United States history? History. All right, I'll take it. You'll take it? In what state was Abraham Lincoln born? Uh, Oklahoma. No, no. Kentucky. He was born in Kentucky. I know you, Look, he you wasn't in Illinois. No, he was. He grew up there, there but uh, he was. Louis, you did fine anyway with the two out of three. Lola? <laughs> We got a couple here from Great Nick, New York. Huh? That's, that's the Foxes, great. Henry and Dorothy. Great Nick, right? That's right. right. Nice to have you with us today. Thank, Thank you. Nice to be here. Dorothy, how long, how long have you been married? Eight and a half years. Uh huh. How did you and uh, Henry meet here? Did they call you Henry or Hank? Uh, Hank. Either way, uh, how did you and Hank meet? Well, I'm afraid we uh, met in a rather dull and uh, routine way. Really? 
Uh, college is not, it's not so much a matter of how you meet. Anyway, I suppose uh, the courtship's the important thing, isn't it? How was the courtship? Uh, well, I'm afraid there uh, isn't much story there. We, uh, that also was rather routine and uh, uninteresting and rather unexciting. Yeah. Uh, well. But the honeymoon, I'll bet, was great, huh? No, Johnny, that was a mess. <laughs> you said your honeymoon was a mess, Dorothy. It's what did you mean? Well, I thought I had made the reservations for the honeymoon, and I thought that he had made the reservations for the honeymoon. He oh. had no place to stay, and it was awful. I just wouldn't want to do that again. I don't blame you, anyway. I Can we have a, uh, a flat tire on the first night of the honeymoon? We That's all did. you need. We certainly did. That's all you need. I mean, the automobile. <laughs> the, yeah, well, I didn't think it was you. Do you, uh, you have any children, Dorothy? Yes, we have two daughters, Janie, seven and Nancy, three. Good. Hank, what do you do for a living? Well, I work for a firm called Good Weather Incorporated. Is this legit, Good Weather Incorporated? Yes, it's, um, I founded the firm and I made myself president. Uh, That's good thinking right yeah. there. Uh, we insure the weather. What do you mean you insure the weather? Well, uh, if you were going away... Weather insurance, you mean? That's right. How, how does this work? Well, if you were going away on a two-week vacation, we'd issue you a policy guaranteeing you good weather. I've never, I didn't know such a thing existed. Suppose you don't get good weather on the vacation. Well, in that case, we'll uh, reimburse you for your room and board charges on the days that it rained. Well, I think that's a great idea. Now, how does, how's exactly does, how much does it cost? Well, it costs about 6% of your room and board charges. Uh, if, for example, you were going away for a week and you were spending $100, the premium yeah. would be $6, but it's generally paid for by the hotel. They make it available for the guests. Yeah, that's a great, how are you doing with this idea? It uh, sounds great. Well, we're making money. <laughs> Now, do you insure just against rain? Uh, no, we'll insure any type of weather situation. And, for example, last St. Valentine's Day, we insured two major retail candy chains against rain or snow. And if it had rained or snowed, uh, we would have paid out approximately $138,000. Wow. What happened? Uh, you have to pay? It looked bad for a while, but uh, eventually uh, it turned out to be a nice day and we didn't have to pay. It didn't rain or snow. Somebody up there likes you, believe me. Well, kind of, what, do you have any other kind of insurance that you have? Uh, well, we have a general insurance business under the name of the Henry Fox Company in which we'll insure uh, unusual types of risks. Is that right? What kind of unusual types of risks? Well, uh, we've insured uh, an actor's uh, wardrobe, and recently we were asked to issue a policy on behalf of the Dion Quintuplets uh, in the event that the <coughs> Quintuplets would have quintuplets. Who took that out there? Husbands? <laughs> I would think this sounds like a fascinating thing. Are you located here in, in New York? Uh, in New York. Well, the next time I'm heading for a picnic or something, I'll take out some weather insurance. We'll How about a fishing trip? Can you get it on a fishing trip? Uh, anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Hey, it's nice to have you with us today. In just a moment, we'll play Who Do You Trust for 500 bucks, okay? Right now, you know, it's a shame that this show isn't in color. We're not too sure that it's even in black and white, but that's, that's not your problem. Uh, it's too bad it isn't in color because here is a dessert that is as good to look at as it is to taste. This is pineapple strawberry pudding. Now, this is another terrific busy day dessert made with our old favorite Jell-O instant pudding. Remember, it's quick to make, and it's just great. Let me show you how easy it is. It's positively no cooking, as you know, and it's ready in minutes. You simply pour two cups of cold milk into a bowl and add one package of strawberry Jell-O. <laughs> Strawberry Jello instant pudding. Uh, don't put the cellophane wrapper in; it makes a little gummy. Then you add just just a, da a dash of salt, and you beat just until it's well blended. You know, it takes you about a minute. Now, after you've done that, you simply uh, add one cup, one uh, cup. <laughs> if you have a cup in the house, add that. It doesn't make it. Add one cup of uh, crushed pineapple, which has been well drained, like that. Now. You, uh, you don't mix that, do you? No, you just, just add that in there like that. Now what you do, you alternate layers of the pudding. You don't add the pineapple. I shouldn't have added the pineapple. What you do... <laughs> you don't add the pineapple, friends. That's in bad taste. You just, uh, you alternate layers of the pudding with the pineapple in the sherbet glasses. So don't put the pineapple in. That stays to one side. And then when you finish, you can top it off with whipped cream. And there you have it. It looks great. Not like I made it, but it does look great. And it'll taste even better. It's another great busy day dessert made in minutes with wonderful Jell-O instant pudding. Get some for my sake <laughs> next time you shop. Hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Who does the cooking? We're in a lot of trouble, I think. <laughs> it's a great product, though. Uh, 
Hank will let you make the decisions on first names of famous people. First names of famous I'll, I'll, people. Want to take this one? Yeah. The heavyweight champion of the world is Patterson. What's his first name? Floyd. Floyd Patterson, right. <laughs> Now, how about songs through the years? Uh, my Little Bride, can I have that one? Okay, Dorothy. From the musical bandwagon of 1931, listen to this still popular song. Dancing in the Dark. Dancing in the Dark, right. <laughs> now, how about uh, United States history? I'll try it. All righty. Who was the president of the Confederacy during the Civil War? Jefferson, Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis is right. <laughs> John, we have somebody here from the U.S. Air Force in Freeport, New York, with his wife, Charlotte, Lieutenant Don Dennington. Hi, nice to have you with us. Where did Ed uh, say you were stationed, uh, Don? Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey, good. Up here on a little vacation? Oh, yes. Yeah, Don, how long have you been married? Oh, we've been married four and a half years. Uh -huh. Did you meet Charlotte while you were in the service? Yes, I met her at a dance at uh, Keesler Air Force Base. Uh, she was in the Air Force also. Is that right? Yes. Hey, what rank did you hold? I was an Airman third class in the Air Force, and I was in two and a half months. Oh. I was going to an Air Force school. What kind of a school was it? There were more fellows than girls, or? <laughs> yes, there were seven girls and 30,000 men. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what great odds. What kind of a school was this? It was a radar school. I bet you were busy dodging antennas all the time, weren't you? I like the odds very much. We're, how many men were in your class now? Well, actually, in my class, I was the only girl, mm -hmm. and uh, there were 30 men, all told. They did, huh? I mean, 30, 30 men, huh? Now, I tell you, that's quite a compliment, Don, that she picked you out of uh, her choice of 30,000 fellows. Uh, how much later were you married after you met? Well, I uh, met her and proposed to her and married her all in four months. That's pretty quick work, well, even, even at the service work. Yeah. <laughs> how come you got married so quickly? Well, uh, I kept my wife up until about uh, midnight every night. So they thought it better to get married. Yeah. Charlotte, did you have to get special permission in, uh, while you were in the service to marry Don? Well, yes, I did. I had to ask my commanding officer, and I went to her and said that I'd like to get married, and yeah. she looked at me and she said, I think you're nuts, but she gave me the permission. Manning officers are all the same, I guess. <laughs> Where did you go on your honeymoon now? Did you have much of a honeymoon? We didn't have a honeymoon. I only had a 48-hour pass. My husband and I got back to the base about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I got a penalty for staying out with him. Are you serious? You need to <laughs> on your honeymoon, you got a penalty for staying out? What was I the penalty? I certainly did. I had to wash all the windows in the barracks the next morning. <laughs> what a way to spend Wasn't a honeymoon. terrible. 48 hours from squeezing to squeezing. It doesn't, uh, doesn't seem right for some reason. Was Don allowed to visit you at all? You oh, no. He wasn't allowed near the barracks. It was very trying for him. I imagine it was. <laughs> Don, you seem to have a very happy... <laughs> as long as he keeps trying, that's the main thing. <laughs> Don, you seem to have had a very happy marriage. You have any, you have any children? Oh, yes. We have two lovely little daughters, C oh, and Margaret. Hey, great. Don, uh, what would you do if you won $500? Well, uh, we've been nursing an old 1954 for the last couple of years. We might trade in something a little bit new. Trade it in and get a new heap, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> about it. Nice to have you with us today. Mm -hmm. In just a moment, we'll play Who Do You Trust? <laughs> Don, you uh, outrank your wife here, so we'll <laughs> let you make the decisions. First names of famous people. What do you want to do with I'd this like one? I'd to trust Charlotte on that one. All right, what is the first name of the noted American author Hemingway? Ernest. Ernest Hemingway, right. <laughs> All right. Songs through the years. I'll take that You'll one. take that one? All right, John plays a song that's been around for a long time. Listen. United States history. I'll try that one, Johnny. All right. Which of the 48 states was once recognized by the U.S. as a republic in its own right? Texas. Republic of Texas, right. <laughs> Don, we'll see you in just a moment. Charles, thank you so much. Okay, Ed, we, we have, have a tie, tie Johnny. That's your oh. tiebreaker. We have a tie between the Foxes and uh, Don Dennington and his wife. So in case of a tie, we'll ask just the gentleman to step up to the board. Write your answer on the board, fellas. Here is the question. In what year was the great composer... Compo in what year was the great composer, you gotta go down and get them fitted, you can't get them by mail. <laughs> In what year was the great composer Mozart born? What year was Mozart born? See, we have 1691 and 1450, that means that Hank Fox is closer, it was 1756. So we'll see you and your wife in a moment. Thank you, Hank. Time right now for today's big $500 a day question return.
returning to try for $1,000. Ad taker, Jeannie McCafferty and tea taster, Alfred Pete. Welcome, welcome. Alfred, how are you? Gene, how are you? So you uh, take ads for personal column, Gene, I understand. And Al, you're a tea taster, and we've got to run today because we're behind schedule, okay? That's right. There's your category. All righty, the returning winners, Dorothy and Hank. The category, gentlemen, is world geography, 500 bucks. What do you want to do with this one? Trust yourself or uh, trust Dorothy? I'll take it. You'll take it, and Al, how about you? I'll take it. You'll take it? All right, world geography for $500 in one minute. <laughs> Hank, can you hear me all right? Yes. All right, here's the question. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the capital cities of the South American countries. That's the 13 South American capital cities. You ready? Go. Uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Bogota, uh, Santiago, uh, 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 La Paz. Okay, we'll be back in a second. Can we have the sound on over here? Al, can you hear me all right? Yes, perfectly well. All right, here's the question. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the capital cities of the South American countries. That's the 13 South American capital cities. Are you ready? Go. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Santiago, uh, All right, the time is up. I don't think we'll have time to read all 13 capital cities. Ed, give us some of them. Just a few, Johnny. Rio de Janeiro, Georgetown, Santiago, Bogota, Lima, Montevideo, and Caracas. Al Pete had two correct. Hank Fox is our winner with four correct answers. Our new champs, the Foxes. <laughs> You must have taken out some quiz show insurance today, huh? Uh, well, I'll, have to, I'll take it out tomorrow. Well, you gave it a good try. You Thank and uh, you. Gene wound up with $500 yesterday. Enjoyed having you with us, and we'll see you tomorrow, right? Thanks for being with us, everybody. See you tomorrow at the same time. <laughs>